All right, so this is 1.7 D in college algebra. One of the things I want to bring up, if this is confusing, welcome to life. Um, I will, at the end, give you a little bit of a pattern to go ahead and figure out all of this stuff just by following some steps. So we're just kind of going over this briefly, so don't freak out and think, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to remember all this stuff? You don't have to, okay? So, vertical and horizontal stretchings and shrinking. So, stretchings means that if you've got this graph, and it looks like this, and it's stretched, it may look like that. It's just stretched, okay? Um, maybe that you get a graph that looks like um, this, and maybe it turns into something like that. It's kind of shrunk a little bit or mushed, uh, whichever way you want to say it. And so we're going to look at what has to happen for some of those to have those things to go on. Okay, so let's say that uh, um, the very first picture on page 157. Okay, so it's got one graph that uh, does this. And then the next graph does that. Okay, that's a stretching. See, it's stretched above and below the original one, and it's called a vertical stretch. Okay, um, sometimes you're going to get shrinking. You may have something. Let's go with yellow here. You may have instead of this white graph, it may go like this. Okay, it may shrink from the original one, okay? And that's what we're going to talk about. It's just um, just about what this graph does at different times here. Let's get some different colors up here. All right, so um, when we have a number multiplied by our building block, remember our building block looks like this, whenever we have something multiplied by it, a number, it will stretch the graph vertically away from the x-axis. That's a, a, a key part there. It will stretch it vertically away from the x-axis if there is a number here. All right, so that number has to be a number that's larger than 1. Okay, I don't care if it's a negative number. I don't care if it's a positive number. If that number is bigger than 1, and ignore the negative on there, it will stretch it away from the x-axis. Okay, so actually what they say is if the absolute value of that number, because remember the absolute value of a negative is a positive, um, so if this were a negative 3, the absolute value of that is going to be a 3. It's going to stretch it like 3 times, okay, away from the x-axis. Very important to remember that part. If that a value right here is a number that is between 0 and 1, if the absolute value of that number is a number between 0 and 1, the graph will be smushed or flattened toward the x-axis. Okay? So, if I've got my graph here, this number here is a number that is bigger than 1, okay, it cannot be 1. If it's bigger than 1, it's going to take a graph like this and pull it higher and lower, stretch it away from the x-axis, okay? If I have a number that is between 0 and 1, and this is my original, it's going to put my graph closer to the x-axis, okay? It's going to be the same shape, it's just going to move it closer. All right. So what does that negative number mean? If I have an equation that looks like this, okay, and I said the absolute value tells you that it stretches it either 
further away from the, the x-axis, or if it's between 0 and 1, it's, it mushes it toward the x-axis. But what happens if that number is negative? What that will do is if that number is negative, it will reflect that graph across the x-axis. So if I have a graph that does this, in this in its negative, it's going to reflect it across the x-axis. So it's going to, you know, and it might do other things too, but that negative just tells you it's going to uh, reflect. It's going to kind of do everything the opposite. All right, so let's go ahead and um, look at some other stuff here. All right, so a minute ago, I said that if we had y equals f of x, and that was our building block, and I put a number here, like an 8, because that number is greater than 1, it's going to pull that graph away from the x-axis. If this were a number between 0 and 1, it would smush it toward the x-axis, and if it was a negative, it would reflect. Okay, so we were just putting numbers right there. All right, the next part is horizontal stretching. Horizontal stretching, what makes it different is instead of that number being out here on the outside of the f of x, it's going to be inside with the x. So it would be like the function of 8x, okay? And it's basically going to mean the same thing, that if that... Um, absolute value of whatever number this is in here, the absolute value of that number is greater than 1, it's going to shrink it horizontally, okay? If, I mean, shrinking it, we're talking about this way. If it is a number between 0 and 1, it's going to stretch it. So it's going to, instead of um, make it uh, shrunk along the um, horizontal axis, it's going to stretch it. Okay. So, and again, if this number here is less than zero, if it's a negative number, it's going to reflect across the y-axis. All right, so let's look at some. All right, so for example, six. This is our building block. That's the drawing that we're looking at. Y equals f of x. Okay, so let's see what we're going to do with this thing. Um, let's see, A says G of X equals 2 F of X. So what are we doing? We're taking our function F of X and we're multiplying it by 2. And when we do that, that is considered a vertical, a vertical stretching is what we're doing here, okay? So, we are doing a vertical stretching by a factor of 2. So, what we can do is we can start throwing numbers in there in order to find out what it's going to do. Um, vertical stretching means that my y values are going to be multiplied by 2. Okay, so my new graph, um, 0 times 2 is 0, so that didn't change. This 2 times 2 is 4. That doesn't change. This negative 4 times 2 gives me a negative 8. So it's going to be down here, and this is going to be here. So that problem is going to look like that. We took our y value and multiplied it by 2, and that tells me how much it stretched past the x-axis. Okay? So that gave me those points. That's what that 2 does. All right, let's look at B. And B says that we're going to take um, H of X, and that's going to equal 1 half F of X. All right, so what does that 1 half mean? That 1 half is between 0 and 2, or 0 and 1, so that tells me it's going to mush where it's going to shrink. So we multiply each one of the y values again by 1 half. So 1 half times 0, that doesn't change. 1 half of this is 1. 
This doesn't change. 1 half of negative 4 is negative 2. So we get our new graph. Looks like that. Okay, it's mushed. It's closer to the, the x-axis because of that one half there. So that's what that one looks like. Okay, so that's all we're doing here is we're just looking at these and saying, all right, so what does putting the numbers in certain places do to this? R of x is times the numbers inside. So we've got a horizontal stretching or shrinking. And it says it's, if it shrunk if this number is bigger than 1. So that's what we're going to do here. So this time, um, we're going to shrink horizontally, and we're going to look at our key points here, and we are going to um, make a few changes here. We are going to take, for a horizontal shrinking, we divide instead of multiply by this number. So we are going to take our x numbers, and we're going to divide. So my negative 5 becomes a negative 2.5. And, and again, this stays the same. And this number, this 4 here, becomes a 2. And let's see, this negative 2 divided by negative 2 is a negative 1. So negative 1, 2. So that point goes there. I think everything else stays. Nope, this one here, 2 divided by uh, 2, negative 2 gives me, or a, duh, a 2 divided by 2 gives me a 1. So that gives me that. Okay, so see how it's the exact same shape? It's just smushed because of that 2 there. So we, everything becomes in half if it's smushed. All right, so let's go to D. D, we have S of X equals F to the 1 half X. So now we're going to divide by 1 half, or basically multiply by um, 2. Okay, so that's going to give us a stretching. And my 5 now, my negative 5 is going to be a 10. And my negative 4, or negative 2 is going to be a negative 4, 2. And this is going to be the same. This will change because it's multiplied by 2. It's going to be a 2, or a 4. And then this one's going to be an 8. So see how it, it stretched it. Because 1 half means that you divide by 1 half or you multiply by 2. All right. And last one, if we did E, and I'm not going to draw this out because it's just, the only thing they did here different is they put a negative one-half in here. So what that does is it gives me this same graph here, but it flips it around because it is a negative. So it just turns it around like that. All right, next video, we will finish up and go over some stuff on how to do this without having too much trouble.